Um, quadratic formula, okay? Hey. Is this the plus or minus David, put your phone away. Put Brianna's phone away. Um, we are doing the quadratic formula. Thank you. Okay, so your format to start is still going to be this type of setup. AX squared plus BX plus C equals zero. Put your bag away. I don't want your bag on your... Thank you. Um, so you're going to see this format, but then you're going to use the quadratic formula from this format, okay? And I believe we did this on um, Friday where we talked about it and we sang the song. Kira, did you sing the song? Yes. Um, quadratic formula is to the tune of all around the mulberry bush. Pop goes the weasel, okay? Um, so here's how it goes. X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A, okay? Here's your song. X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. Pop goes the weasel, okay? Um, can I do it again? No, I'm good. Um, but notice this. This is interesting. Have you seen that before? Yeah. Yeah, two axis of symmetry. Isn't that cool? How it all plays in together? Yeah. Um, okay, but... That's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about quadratic formula. So what you're gonna do with this is very basic. You're plugging it into a formula, what you know. So first problem, let's say we have two x squared minus x minus four equals zero. Now, some of you maybe like factoring better and that's great, but sometimes you have to do the quadratic formula. Sometimes you're not able to factor it or sometimes it's not gonna work out as beautifully with the calculator. Um, so when we tell you to do it with the quadratic formula, you must do it with the quadratic formula because we need to know that you know it. Even if it's factorable, if we say use the quadratic formula, you need to use the quadratic formula, okay? Um, so in this setup, this is your A. What's your B right now? Negative one. Negative one, and your C, okay? Um, so we're going to take this and we're going to plug it in here, okay? So x equals negative b. Now be careful with this because a negative, negative 1 is what? One. A positive 1. So a negative b right now is 1 plus or minus the square root. And here's the thing, okay? This is where all the mistakes happen. B squared. If your b is a negative number and you square it, what are you going to get every time? A positive number. This number right here, you guys, if you ever get a negative there, you're wrong. It is always positive. Okay? So you're doing this. Okay? So you have negative 1 squared. That is positive 1. Right? What do you mean it's already negative? I don't know what you're talking about right now. I'm saying this number right here is never negative because negative 1 squared is 1. Right? If you square a number, it is always positive. So maybe to avoid the chaos, maybe you do that part in your head and don't even write the negative number down because some of you are going to write the negative number down and then you're going to give me a negative answer. Don't. Um, some of it you can. Yeah. Um, but we're leaving this in simplest radical, so you'll see where that's not always going to happen. Okay. My turn. So B squared minus 4 times A times C. C is negative 4. Okay. All over 2 oops, times your A term, which is 2. Okay. Now, if you want, you can plug this whole thing into your calculator. 
but just be careful that you put parentheses around the negative number if you're going to do it that way. Okay? Um, so this is 1 <laughs> plus 4 times 2 times 4. Bo, if I have to tell you one more time to be quiet, you're going to go sit out there. Because I can't be distracted anymore. Because um, it's minus a negative, right? So it's basically you're saying 1 minus 4 times 2 times negative 4 is a negative 32. So it's 1 plus 32, okay? Um, so you are doing 1 plus or minus the square root of 33 over 4. Here's the beautiful thing. That's your answer. Okay? Oh. No, yeah, because we had to add the 1 to it. Yes? Oh, my calculator gave me a, a weird decimal number when I um, did the math for everything that was inside the square root. You did negative 1 squared? No, I just did 1 minus 4 times 2 times negative 4. And it gave you a decimal? Um, then your calculator did not do PEMDAS correctly. So, oh, you took the square root? We're not taking the square root. We're leaving it in simplest radical form. Okay? Um, okay, so here's the deal, you guys. How many answers is this? It's two. It's two because you're doing plus or minus, right? One plus the square root of 33 divided by 4, and 1 minus the square root of 33 divided by 4. Okay, so this is two answers, but you may leave it just like that, and those are your answers. Okay, simplest radical form. That's all you can do, but it gets fancier. All right, so let's say we have 2x squared minus 2x equals 3. Okay, right now, this is not in the right format. What do we need to do? You need to move the 3 over. So you're going to do 2x squared minus 2x minus 3 equals 0. Okay? Now you'll plug it into the quadratic formula. So you're going to say x equals negative b is what right now? 2. A positive 2, right? Opposite of negative 2. So a positive 2 plus or minus the square root of b squared, so negative 2 squared is what? 4, okay? Um, I don't care if you write it as negative 2 squared, but don't forget those parentheses. If you don't plug those parentheses in, your calculator is going to tell you it's negative 4, and your calculator is wrong, okay? Um, so b squared minus 4 times a, which is 2, times c, which is negative 3, all over 2 times a. Okay, so you get 2 plus or minus the square root of, and then just plug that whole thing in. That would be 4 minus, what is that, a negative 24. So 4 plus 24 is 28 over 4, okay? But now here's the thing. Is the square root of 28 simplest radical form? No. So what you're going to do here is you're going to put this into simplest radical. What's the perfect square that goes into 28? Uh, four. four. Okay. So this is the square root of 4 and the square root of 7, or 2 rad 7. So that means that we actually have 2 plus or minus 2 rad 7 over 4. Do you see anything else you can simplify? Can the first two or four? The twos and the four, right? We can reduce all of that. So this is actually going to be two over four, right? Reduces to one over two. Two over four reduces to one over two. So it's going to be one plus or minus one rad seven, which we can just call rad seven, over two. That is your answer. Okay? Again, it's two answers, right? Because it's the plus and it's the minus but you have to put it in simplest radical form, okay? Next one. You have x squared plus 6x plus 9 
equals zero. Now you could factor this one very quickly, right? We're not going to, because I want to show you a situation that may happen um, in this type of problem. So if this is my setup, x equals negative what? Six. Negative b would be a negative six plus or minus the square root of b squared, so six squared minus four. What's a? A is 1, right? You have this 1 out here that you don't see. Um, C is 9 all over 2 times 1, okay? When we simplify that, you get 36 minus 36. So it's negative 6 plus or minus the square root of 0 over 2. What's the square root of 0? 0. So it's negative 6 plus or minus 0 divided by 2. Well, if you think of that as two different answers, negative 6 plus 0 is negative 6. Negative 6 minus 0 is negative 6. So really your answer is just x equals negative 6 over 2. So x equals negative 3. There is no second answer on that one. And if you think of it in terms of factoring, how would this factor? x squared plus 6x plus 9. It's 3 and 3. x plus 3 squared, if you set that equal to 0, you just get a negative 3. Okay? Just one answer. So if you get a 0 as, as your radical, you will only get one answer. Does that make sense? Yes? Okay. Um, last problem. Example 2 here. Let's say you are going to sell CDs for a profit. And your equation for that profit is P equals negative X squared plus 48X minus 300. Okay, so that's your equation for it. Where P is the profit And X is your number of CDs. Okay. Um, I want to know what is the number of CDs, so what is X, to make a profit of $200? Okay. What would X have to be if we want to make a profit of $200? So you're going to start by plugging this in where? 200. It's not, 200 is not your number of CDs. 200 is your profit, right? So that's going to go here. So we're going to say 200 equals negative x squared plus 48x minus 300. Is that set up so we can do quadratic formula? you got to take away the 200. We want it to equal 0. Okay, so take away 200, and we get 0 equals negative x squared plus 48x minus 500. Okay? Um, so we want to know the number of CDs. In other words, we're solving for x with the quadratic formula. So it's going to be x equals a negative... B, which is what? Negative 48 plus or minus the square root of B squared, 48 squared, minus 4. What's my A? Times negative 1. What's my B or C? Minus 500. Okay, all over 2 times negative 1. Um, because this is a real-world problem, does it make sense to leave it in simplest radical form? No. We would not get a number of CDs from that, okay? So what you're going to do is you're actually going to simplify this further than simplest radical. So it's going to be negative 48 plus or minus. If we break this down, 48 squared um, minus 4 times negative 1 times 500, you get... Three oh four. Okay, over 
negative two. Now from here, um, I would do two different problems. I would do negative 48 plus the square root of 304, hit enter, and then divide by negative two. So make sure you hit enter. If you, do, if you just divide, it's gonna do it wrong because it doesn't understand order of operations that you're doing here. So negative 48 plus the square root of 304, hit enter, you should get negative 30.564, then divide by negative two. And you get this, this number. Um, keep in mind, we're talking cost. So this would be to dollars and cents, 1528. Okay, but then you gotta do the other one too. Negative 48 minus the square root of 304, hit enter, and then divide by negative two. Negative 48 minus the square root of 304, hit enter, divide by negative two. And you get this number. Okay, um, now here's the deal. You got two values. We're looking for um, oh, I said the number of CDs earlier, huh? Sorry. Go back here. This is the price of a CD. <coughs> Sorry. That didn't make any sense. Now it does. Um, so if you look at these two numbers, we're trying to make a profit, but we're also trying to sell CDs that people will actually buy. So to make a profit of $200, we can either sell them for this or we can sell them for this. What should we sell them for? 32%. But if it's a fire album, you can charge it. Yeah, that's true. Because what? If it's fire, then it's a bop. <laughs> yep, don't know what either one of those means. But I, cool, groovy. Yeah, that's my language, groovy. You think I'm from like the 50s or something? Come on, I was born in 82. Um, if it's bad. Rad, rad. No, rad would be my generation. It's if it's rad, oh, radical. And we're talking That's radical. What I say. Um, oh, sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Jared. Um, anyway, are you going to answer my question or you have a question? I have a question. Yes, go ahead. So, would any, would any price in between those two prices also be profit? Uh, yeah. A bigger profit, right? Yes, good observation. Um, but here's the thing. We want a profit of $200. These two will get you a profit of $200, but you also have to consider that people are gonna pay a certain amount for a CD. They're more likely to pay $15.28 for a CD than $32.72. So you should sell them if you want a profit of $200 for $15.28, okay? Take that one. Okay, um, questions on that? That is quadratic formula.